Hey guys, welcome to another video. Um, sorry I didn't post yesterday. If you saw the video of the explanation, basically I had a headache and something and couldn't really type without my, like, couldn't really focus on typing, so decided to take a break that day. But then I promised that I'd do three today because, basically, we have a week off school and I have nothing better to do. So, yeah. Uh, it's not overworking, I promise. I do this by choice. It just, like, makes me so happy when I put a video out and people comment and you know thanks for commenting because that means a lot and all of that good stuff and watching your channel grow i don't think i felt something so nice in a while actually because it's just it's cool to know that people appreciate what you do um yeah so the other ones i wanted to put out today were found three and guardian angel three or a secret season three episode four so um for guardian angel three or a secret that is on i haven't really fully decided on those but found three will definitely come out today because you but you guys really seem to enjoy that series um anyway let's get started alone four go carapace broke each item rena captured each one safely chat held marinette close they didn't know how much it would affect her the three Akumas were no longer merged to her. She started to shift and they realized it worked. The earrings went back to the form of a miraculous. I think we should purify them, said Chat. He got up slowly and gave the earrings to Alia. Go ahead, you're capable. Tiki was resting on a shelf. It drained her. Her having an Ak the owner akumatized was the worst thing for a Kwame. She informed them of the magic words and Alia became Ladybug. She purified each Akuma and detransformed. They watched Marinette closely. Please be okay. She needed to be okay. She was the best of them. The bravest, the prettiest, the strongest, the most determined. The best. Carapace G transformed. Adrian didn't want to give her too much to handle too soon. He stays at Chat Noir. He got he stayed as Chat Noir. He got up to the hospital and it's supposed to be to the bed. I don't know where my head was at. And ever so gently shook her shoulder, hoping she would wake awake. A few seconds later she was opening her eyes. The images slowly got less blurry. She saw Nino and Alia. She then felt a strong, strong hand around her. She looked up to see her boyfriend worried. K Kitty? She whispered. He looked at her and hugged her. I'm so happy. I've missed you so much, princess. How are you feeling? He asked. Um, okay. Where am I? What happened? She asked curiously. Later, princess. For now, let's make sure you're okay and take you home, he said softly. He laid his head on hers. She rested against him. Marinette was mostly okay. She had a bit of a headache, a throat ache from not talking, and her muscles were weak as she hadn't moved in weeks. After she was feeling a bit more awake, she was given water and some painkillers. Her parents walked back into the hospital. The press was w still waiting on answers. Marinette didn't know how long exactly, but she must have been asleep for a while. The look on everyone's faces was enough to prove that. Can someone please tell me what happened? Her parents nodded at Chat Noir in approval. In approval. It was her right to know. We were cuddling to sleep, as always. I didn't notice, but in the night, Akumatized Lila... And Akumatized Lila, Chloe, and Kagami took you. At first, I didn't worry. Then I saw you passed out in the layer of hawk moth. I don't know how, but they got you in your sleep. I'm sorry. I should have gotten them. He said regretfully. She noticed the guilt in his eyes and she hugged him. You did get them. It's not your fault. I'm okay. I know you tried your best. I love you. I don't blame you. She smiled reassuringly. So she stayed in his arms. 
This is the point she feels the most comfortable. If she got to be in a random desert, rocky, sandy, hot, and she had to sleep on the sand, she would hate it. But if Shat was there, it would be a great night. Her family and friends went home. All that was left was her and her boyfriend. She stared into his emerald eyes. He stared into her sapphire eyes. He cuddled her tight. No one was going to get her as long as he was alive. Don't worry, I'll be fine. Hey, how did you get me to wake up? It looked like you hadn't seen me in a while. Not as if it was days, but as if it was months, she commented. You were asleep for months. I visited every day. One day I was here as usual, and you started glowing dark purple. We realized we never cleansed the three akumas. We knew your lady. We know your ladybug. Everyone knows. They even know who I am. Anyway, Alia used your miracula. We cleansed them. A few minutes later, you woke up. I was so glad. I thought I'd never see you again. Never kiss you again. Never hug you again. Never talk to you again. Never comfort you again. I thought I lost you. He was interrupted. She kissed him. You'll never lose me. We're heroes, right? She giggled. Princess, can I... Can I reveal my identity to you? Everyone else knows. Please, he asked. Marinette nodded. I love you. I want to know who my truest love is. She smiled. Claws off. Surprise. I hope you're not disappointed. I love you. He said, my kitty, I love you. I don't love your mask. I love the person wearing it. She smiled. Marinette was able to go home a few days later. Her awakening was announced to the press. She was slowly filled in on everything she missed. It was a lot to handle. She and Adrian continued dating. They really loved each other. Adrian brought her flowers every day. He treated her to fun trips. He cared for her. One day he took her on a date. It was a picnic, except the fact that it was on the Eiffel Tower. As they started to leave, he stopped her. Marinette, I love you. I can't imagine life without you. I love you more than anyone else. So, he got down on one knee. Will you marry me? He asked that magic question. He asked the magic question. She started tearing up. Of course, Kitty. He got up and hugged her. Holly is going to freak. Actually, Paris is going to freak. Marinette giggled. So they got married and had three wonderful kids. Marinette became a designer and they got a hamster. Ladybug and Chat Noir were retired. They helped the police once in a while. But they were not full-time heroes. For now. And that's the end of Alone, the series. There might be a season two. That's why I left the for now bit. Because I don't want to, you know, limit it. Limit it. Um, so I hope you enjoyed. As you might have noticed, there was more words than usual, than usual in this one. I think it's like just under a thousand words. Um, yeah, I think it's like 990 or four or something like that. So it's just under a thousand words. It's like a sentence away. Um, which is cool. That's nice. So I'm just trying to make up for yesterday because it sucked that I didn't upload. I'm losing my streak and I've uploaded like 50 videos. Um, yeah. Um, so question of the day. Um, I need to get these prepared, man. Uh, what's your favorite animal? Let's just do that. Um, my favorite animal would be, geez, I don't know. Um... I need to think of my answers and the questions in advance. I'll do that for the next video, which will come out later today. Um, my favorite animal. I like all animals. Like, I was the type of girl when I was growing up, you know, to watch, you know, wild crats and octonauts and all those, you know, information type ones. Because I always just had fun 
memorizing the weirdest of facts and like you know arguing with my dad about them like for example let me t- do a quick story time um one time we were coming home from school and my dad picked us up which is really nice because i my dad doesn't usually come pick us up like he's a very busy person so it was nice that he can pick us up um and on the way home we get into we like you know we start coming up and i'm like hey baba no it was in the car i was like hey baba did you know that killer whales are actually dolphins? And he was like, no, they're not. And I was like, yes, they are. Orcas are actually dolphins. And he was like, no, they're not. So we argued and argued the whole way home. And let me tell you, it was my biggest joy when he said he was about to Google it. And I got, we got in, we were about to walk up, we were about to get to the house. And I was like, fine, Google it. And he was like, okay, then. So he takes out his phone and, you know, he starts typing in, is a killer whale a whale or a dolphin? And when I saw his face, I broke down laughing. I was so happy. I realized exactly what he'd read just by his face. He was so annoyed and I was so happy. He was just like, fine, they're whales, they're dolphins, but... It says here that dolphins are actually a subspecies of whales. So we were both right. And I was like, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's not how it works. I'm right. And he's like, no, we are right. And I was like, fine, we're right, but I'm more right. Uh, and that was that was a couple of years ago, but it's still one of my favorite memories ever. I love proving my dad wrong. Or when we were in the plane, oh, I'm going into full story mode. You guys can leave now. You don't have to stay. But like, if you want to hear more stories about my life... Once we were in a plane, and we were sitting together, and, you know, I got bored of, you know, watching movies and whatever, because, like, it's a plane, it doesn't have every movie, it takes a while. Um, I had a good selection of movies, but I got bored of movies. So I was like, hey, Bob, let's play some burying games. So, um, instead of playing a game on the thing we wanted to play together, so I pulled out my phone, and I was like, let's play this game. And, um, it's called, like, 2048. And basically, you have to match up numbers and all this stuff. And so I would go and get a score, and he'd have to beat the score, and then I'd have to beat that score. And, you know, we kept going up. Um, And basically, we started insulting each other. And I was like, because he would almost die, and then he'd pull it back. I was like, oh, you pulled it back. That's surprising. And he goes, oh, you're an idiot. That's surprising. Oh, wait, it's not. And I thought of the best comeback. I was like, you're right. It's not. Look who raised me. And I was so proud of myself. I know it's not even that smart. I was just like, look who raised me. And I felt so good in that moment. You wouldn't believe it. Okay, one more and then I'll leave. Um, I'd be surprised if people are still listening. But the other story is one day he walked into... So we were at my grandparents' house. And me and my brother, as usual, were, were being antisocial. So we were, you know... Staying on our iPads or on the TV. I think it was our iPads. Um, And he walks in and he goes, From now on, when I walk in, the iPads go down. We should talk to each other. Um, so, and, he, and so then he left the room and, you know, got into the dining table because it was time for lunch. And, you know, I got into the closet room, you know, and started changing. And I replayed the sentence in my head. When I walk into the room, iPads go down. When I walk into... And I come out and I sit next to him with a smile on my face. But Baba, what if I sit outside? Oh my god, that was the priceless when I looked at his face. Outside's not a room, is it? Because there's no walls blocking it off. So by definition, if I sit outside, I don't have to put my iPad down. And so they were kind of, you know, trying to convince me that the Wi-Fi wouldn't be so good. But it, but the house is pretty big and the Wi-Fi is pretty good. So I was like, if I sit outside, the Wi-Fi will work fine enough. And so just to prove my point, I sat outside for like two hours. And that rule never became a rule. So my brother should be thanking me. Anyway, I'm going to go now. Um, bye. That totally went off topic for favorite animal. But um, you guys can tell me a funny story down there. Uh, but I don't mind. Anyway, bye.